Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Devils in God's Country. I'm one of your hosts, Casper Rigsby. Um, our lovely, talented co-host, Miss Allie Jackson, should be joining us shortly. Um, I think she may have gotten a little bit delayed. There she is! We got Miss Allie. Yay! Hi! There she is. Hello! <laughs> There's Miss Allie. Ah. So we, we already started. It was it was right at eight. You were you were yeah. pushing the envelope, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, yeah, there's Miss Allie, and we've got our other um, wonderful, talented co-host, uh, Mr. Tony Prouse, with us here tonight again. He'll be here with us every night uh, from here forward. Um, been here for a couple episodes. We're glad to have Tony with us. Uh, give us a more wide range of viewpoints here. Um, tonight's episode, we are going to deal with the dangers of religious freedom laws, and um, we we got to started we we got started talking about this topic um, by bringing up a a mother in Indiana who is using Indiana's uh, religious freedom laws um, to validate her child abuse against her seven-year-old son, um, where she has decided that it was okay to beat the living shit out of him with a wire coat hanger. Um, anybody seen Mommy Dearest? Yeah. So, ugly shit. Um, definitely something to be uh, talked about, whether you... Uh, hate and despise such action as I do, um, as I think our, our co-hosts also do, or, um, or, or, or whether you want to you wanna throw in the ring that, you know, maybe it's okay, you know, maybe it's okay to beat the living shit out of your kid, or um, as, as many religious believers want to call it, discipline. I'm just disciplining my child by beating them with various objects or, you know... Um, Spanking them, uh, whatever whatever you think is discipline. Um, so I, I guess I guess I'll start off the the discussion simply by um, reiter reiterating an idea that I've I've uh, put forward several times in the past um, here on the show and in um, more than one blog that I've written for Atheist Republic, which is that there there is a difference between discipline. And fear. Okay, there there is a difference between punishment and discipline. Um, th there's a difference between all of these things. And what what a lot of these religious believers, and I'm sure this mother in Indiana wants to wants people to to uh, agree with, is that she's just disciplining her child because her child is unruly. So the point I like to make to a lot, to to people that that you know have that mindset and that viewpoint is is this: um, first of all, is your child old enough to understand why you're doing this to them? If not, then they're not old enough to reason, and so you shouldn't hit them because they don't understand why the fuck you're hitting them. Okay, we go back and ask that question again. Is your child old enough to understand why you're doing this? Yeah, my child's old enough to understand that. Okay, your child is old enough to understand reason. So fucking reason with them. Have a conversation. Have a discussion. If you want to discipline your child, teach them why they should behave. Teach them why in the real world... There are repercussions for their actions. If they've stolen money out of your purse or, or your wallet or off your nightstand, teach them why stealing has repercussions in the adult grown-up real world. Teach them about jail and prison and the sort of repercussions that happen when you steal things. Have they lied to you? Well, teach them about the repercussions of lying. You already said your child is old enough to understand why you're beating them. So they're old enough to understand logic and reason. So you reason with them. You teach them. That's how discipline works. Okay, A disciplined individual does not 
do the right thing or act in a just and ethical manner simply because of the fear of repercussion. They do it because they know that it's the right thing to do. They do it because they understand on multiple levels what ethicism is. They understand what it is to be an ethical human being. If your child doesn't understand these things, you may need to send them to a psychologist because they may have soci sociopathic or psychopathic tendencies. They may not be able to comprehend what ethics are and how to behave like an ethical human being. They may need mental health um, um, assistance. You know, they, they may need to see a professional. Because if you as a fellow human being can't tell another human being, hey, you shouldn't hit other people because no one wants to be hit and because it is an unethical thing to do. Violence doesn't solve problems. Violence creates problems. It creates hatred. It creates anger. It creates resentment. If you think that you can discipline your child by hitting them, that doesn't mean you have an unruly child that can't be handled. That means you're not really a good parent. And I'm sorry if I hurt some people's fucking... No, I'm not. No, I'm fucking not. I'm not sorry if I hurt your fucking feelings saying that. I'm not fucking sorry at all. You're a bad fucking parent if you have to hit your fucking kid. You're a terrible fucking parent. Take some fucking parenting classes. Read a goddamn book. Learn some fucking psychology. That is a child. That is a child who, if they're of an age where they can understand reason, needs to be reasoned with. They need to be educated. They don't need to be beaten. Beating them is only going to teach them that violence solves problems. And guess what? In the real fucking world, violence doesn't solve problems. I get pissed off at people at Walmart all the fucking time for being douchebags in the middle of fucking Walmart or Kroger or wherever the fuck else I'm at. Cutting me off at the fucking end of the line, just running their buggy into my shit, um, just being rude as fuck, parking their shit in the middle of the fucking aisle. Do I go over and fucking just slap the shit out of them? The fuck's your problem? Figure it out, fucks hard. Do I do that? No. No. I reason with them. Excuse me. Could you please move so that I can get by you? That's what reasonable fucking ethical people do. We don't just run around beating the shit out of people. Is it okay to beat your wife if she burns your fucking dinner? No. No. That's not cool. So is it okay to beat your fucking seven-year-old if he leaves his Legos on the floor and you happen to step on him, fucking bruise your foot? No. No, it's not. No. Are your children your fucking property to do with as you please? Are they slaves that just happen to have come out of your vagina or your wife's vagina? And so you get to do whatever the fuck you want with them? No. No, they're not. Those are little human beings that are eventually going to grow up into big human beings, big adult human beings. And what you do to them as children has an impact. It impacts their thinking. It impacts their actions. It impacts their entire worldview. So the reason we can't have nice shit right now is because so many people throughout all of our fucking human history have uh, taught their kids to be douchebags. <laughs> you know? And if your kid's a douchebag, that's not necessarily your kid's fault. That's probably your fault. You're probably just a terrible fucking parent and a terrible fucking human being. And, uh, you know, I'm glad I don't know a lot of those people. Um... Because somewhere deep down inside of me, because I, I was one of those kids who, whose parents believed that a belt could solve a problem, um, there, there's this part of me just, just deep inside of me that I've really tried to bury away and lock away that w when I see these parents, I just want to go over there and just punch them square in the fucking mouth. Right, how do you like it? How do you like that shit, fucked art? Don't hit your fucking kid. You want to hit somebody, hit a grown-ass fucking adult. See where that gets you. Don't hit your fucking kid. Reason with them. Talk to them. Figure it out. 
If you can't talk to them, find somebody that can talk to them. Get them some help. Find somebody that can make them understand these things. And if the, if the person can't make them understand something, m maybe they need medication. Maybe their brain chemistry is not quite right. So that's where I'm at. I'll let you take over, Alan. Uh, Ali, I, I think Tony's uh, having some dinner. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, obviously, you know I agree with everything you just said. I, I think that it's absolutely terrible. Um, but to bring this into the religious aspect of, of what it means to have religious freedom to murder your child and, and get to blame it on religion, this brings things to a whole new level. So Casper, you started that off with an absolute, um, I don't think anyone in their logical mind could possibly argue with you. There is nobody worse in the world than, than a parent who publicly berates their child physically, um, in my opinion, and then the parent who also verbally berates their child publicly. If your child's fucked up, you know, you're allowed to whisper in their ear, we're going to have a conversation about this when we get home. But to sit there in the middle of a store and tell them that they're stupid, they're trash, they're whatever, how dare you do this to me in public, you're embarrassing me. No. Honey, you're embarrassing yourself, okay, because you're yelling at a child who probably didn't know any better, or they're cranky and you decided to take them to the store. They're hungry and you decided to take them to the store. It's their nap time and you decided to take them to the store. I mean, there's there's a lot of aspects here where parents, hello, <laughs> we need to ourselves step back and say, I made the fucking mistake here. My child's throwing a temper tantrum because I chose to take them out of the house unprepared, so why don't I go ahead and excuse myself from the store? You know, and, that, and that's that was one of my things is if I took my kid to a restaurant and they started crying, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to take the kid to the to the bathroom, to the car, somewhere so it can calm down. A child never cries for no reason. And I get so frustrated. I've I have actually spoken out to parents who have screamed at their child, quit crying for no reason. Oh, they're crying for a reason. Okay, they're crying because you're not getting them that candy bar. Now, you might not like that reason. Totally understandable that you don't like that reason. But it's for a fucking reason. And you need to figure out why this is the end of the world for them right now. Probably because they need a nap. Probably because you didn't feed them before you took them to a grocery store. You know, and, and so, yeah, I, I have absolutely flipped out when I, when I hear quit crying for no reason or I'm going to give you a reason to cry. Bitch, he already had a reason to cry. That's why he was crying. So shut up. Um, so there's there's definitely just piss poor parenting. And then there's parenting based on religion. To bring up a child is a great book that I think that we should all discuss right now. To bring up a child is a book that has killed and is absolutely responsible for killing multiple children. Okay, multiple children. Uh, this book is responsible for six months old being placed on a blanket. And if the baby crawls off the blanket, a parent is to beat its hands for crawling off of a blanket. Can you even fathom that? At six months old, you're training up a child at six months old? Fuck you. And this book goes on and on, even worse. Deprive them of food. Deprive them of shelter. Make them sleep naked in the backyard to train up a child. Yes, Casper, you're right. Um, I don't. I don't even know what I said. I'm kind of on a roll here. But um, it is. It's a book called To Train Up a Child, and it was written by some Christian uh, married couple who are monsters. Um, so, so we we have this book. We have this book that teaches parents that you can beat your children and have it be for religious purposes. And I think that's sick. A parent's hand should be touching a child when a child needs nurturing or when a child needs encouragement, uh, when a child needs a hug or a high five. You know what I mean? Um, otherwise, they absolutely do. And, and, and in the book, it does say this. In the book, it does say that a hand should only be for those purposes. And so they encourage you to get a PVP pipe and just bust the shit out of your kid with PVP pipe. And that way, it's not your hand. It's the PVP pipe. Uh, and I think that's really fucked up because any kid with, you know, any sort of, of mental capacity whatsoever can understand that it's mom's hand that's holding that pipe and it's her wielding it at me. So uh, that, that stops nothing. And then we have states in America that still to this day, Indiana has been a, a 
bane of mine. I fucking hate their laws and the way that they allow child abuse. Um, because in Indiana, Utah, and there's a few other states uh, that we have, a parent can kill their child by not taking it to the doctor. We don't believe uh, children need, my cat's here, sorry. We don't believe children need to uh, go to the doctor. We pray away their sickness. The child dies. Police come to get the body. Uh, it is a parent's right to hold on to a body, even though it's not. Uh, it's law that, that the police have a right to a dead body in our country. Now, in Serbia, uh, that's, that's actually different. Um, they don't do autopsies, and, and families keep a dead body. They dress a dead body. They bury their own dead. So there, there's a huge difference between America and, and different countries. So if you're from a different country, we do understand this. But talking about Indiana and places like that, here we autopsy our dead no matter what. And, and, and a coroner, you hand your, your dead over to a coroner, um, investigations get to take place no matter what. Someone's old, my, my grandma was old, and she had a heart attack. Um, they autopsied her body, she was in the hospital. You know, we autopsy the dead, but in Indiana, these parents are saying, no, we don't want you to take our, our child. How dare you try to rip a child out of our hands? A dead child out of our hands? No, we're not going to have it. And and they, there are so many children who are not even registered who are murdered due to religion that we will never even know about due to religion, due to the fact that they don't believe in hospitals, they don't believe in doctors, they don't believe in a child's right to their own their own civil liberty. I mean, to me, to me, I think health is is a civil liberty. It's something that we should all. Uh, be be afforded and allowed, and in this country, you kind of are. Your parents can't afford to get you um, health care. The government will give your child health care. It's it's out there. It's something that I think every child should absolutely be allowed. Um, so it's it's frustrating to me. It's frustrating to me that we have laws that allow parents to not only abuse their children, but to actually murder their children in the name of religion. And Tony is back, so I want him to talk about the case um, that happened recently, if you want to, Tony. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know this woman's name, because she's Korean and it's hard to pronounce, but uh, this woman pretty much uh, beat her seven-year-old, I believe, with a coat hanger, stay classy, and uh, the reason she did it was because apparently this seven-year-old was, I think, making fun of her sister. Uh, sorry, his sister. So, damn, I need to do my fucking research. Um, yeah, she was pretty much beaten. He was making fun of his sister, therefore that got him beaten. And the reason she did this was because she was supposedly concerned about his uh, eternal soul for... I, apparently him making fun of said sister, which, don't get me wrong, I've made fun of my sisters on several occasions. I've got five of them. Um, but this particular, when it comes to stuff like this, uh, it's kind of hard for me to talk about because I have experience with it because for the first seven years of my life, I grew up with my bio mom and her boyfriend, and her boyfriend thought it would be funny to beat me and my, at the time, three sisters around from room to room. And he would even take his take it a step further, and he would put um, cigarette butts out on my arm and as well as my back. And uh, yeah, that did not go well over with my biological father, who, luckily for me, fought very hard to get me out of that environment. But to sit there and use your religion as um, an excuse, I'm getting honestly sick and tired of this. It is 2016. I'm sorry, just, it bugs me so fucking much when I hear them using the Bible as an excuse to sit there and think that this is their right. No, it is not your right to beat your fucking child. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm all for spankings. I'm pro-spanking, I guess. Nothing wrong with that once in a while if your kid's out of control. But beating that, beating your kid with a fucking coat hanger because he made fun of his sister for whatever reason, that is fucking uncalled for. And... <clears throat> Damn it, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, you're, you're right to end when it comes to your children, okay? It is not your fucking religious right to kill your children. It's not your religious right to beat your children. 
and don't don't even come at me with this oh with a victim victim complex because it's it's not gonna fly. Pretty much all I got. Well, <clears throat> first of all, um, I wanna I wanna touch on on what Ali um, was talking about with this book. Um, let me go ahead and share this real quick. I'll bring it up where everybody can see it. This this fucked up piece of shit book to train up a child um, is still available for purchase right here on Amazon. Um, if you wanna, if you for some fucked up reason want to buy this terrible, awful fucking book, and please don't. Please, nobody buy this book. Um, it, it it is available. So you know, people are people are still buying it. Um, it's still available on here. It was written by Michael and Debbie Pearl, um, and uh, as you can see from looking here, we've got um, a little over four thousand seven hundred uh, customer views. It gets a two star rating, and uh, thank goodness for that. I mean, honestly, we got 29% five-star ratings, okay? And that in and of itself is a fucking travesty. How anyone could give this book a five-star rating is fucking beyond me. Because this book, in all honesty, is, is a fucking manual for how to beat your fucking child into submission, okay? Um, and, and for me personally... Um, I don't even agree with spanking, honestly. I, I don't agree with a person raising their hand to another human being except in self-defense, period. I just don't. Um, I know that's a personal choice. I know not everyone's going to agree with me. I get it. You're, you're welcome to your opinion. Whomever ha holds a different opinion and whatever that opinion is, I understand you're free to have that opinion. Um, but for me personally, I, I'm going to tell you that when you raise your hand to another human being, it is an act of violence. Okay, Even if you think you're disciplining your child, um, I'm sure there are plenty of wife beaters out there who think they're just trying to train their wife. They're just trying to discipline their wife. And, 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 you know, sometimes she needs a good smack just to, to get her to figure out that she's not doing it the way you want her to do it. Um, I'm, I'm sure there, there are people out there who, who use that excuse, and they really think that in their minds, that it's okay to raise your hand in violence towards another human being, and that's an acceptable, you know, way of making them understand your position. Um, from my personal point of view, that is violence. That's all it is. It's violence. That means that you are incapable of having a rational and logical conversation or discussion with another human being. Okay? My, my second point here is when dealing with children, okay, as I said before, you, you're not they're not your property okay just because you gave birth to them just because you helped make them um, in whatever form that you contributed into that process that does not mean you have ownership over them okay and we have so many of these um, anti-abortionists and these supposed pro-lifers fuck you you're not pro-life you're a cunt but we have so many of these fucking people that are like, oh, well, you know, life begins at conception and we have to protect these aborted fetuses and shit. And so many of those same fucking people will come to the defense of this fucking cunt that sat here and fucking beat her child with a fucking coat hanger because that that's her religious right. That's her child. She should be able to discipline her child however she sees fit. Even if that leads to emotional and physical harm to that child, oh, well, that, that's her kid. She should have the right to discipline him however she wants. No, she doesn't. You don't. Whomever you are, if you're a religious person watching this show that thinks you have the right to beat your child, no, you fucking don't. Okay? You want to tell me you're fucking pro-life? You want to tell me that you, you fucking give a shit about human rights? 
and human life in and of itself, well then, let's understand, let's all fucking understand that that is another human being. That human being has rights. Now, personally, I will say once you are born into this world, you should be afforded every single right that every other human being has. Now, am I saying when you're born you should be able to drink? No. You know, we have laws that govern everyone that say, hey, man, you can't drink till you're 21, 18, whatever, in whatever country you're at. You know, we have laws that say, yeah, you can't smoke, you can't drive, you can't do this or that until you're of a certain age. Totally understandable. But when it comes to certain given inalienable human rights that we should afford to every person on this planet, that should start at birth. Okay, and, and one of those rights is the right not to be assaulted by another human being. As a grown-ass adult, if I punch another person in the fucking face, another grown adult, that is assault. If I use a weapon to do this, that is aggravated assault. That is a felony offense. I can receive up to 20 years in prison, and if I do enough damage or harm to that person, assaulting them with a, with a weapon, then I could potentially receive life in prison for attempted murder. This should apply to children as well. Every child, from the moment they're born into this fucking world, we should apply those same rights that we give to every adult human over the age of 18 and say, hey, you have a right not to be assaulted by another human being. I don't give a fuck if that person gave birth to you. They don't have the right to assault you in any way, shape, or form. And if they do, that person should be prosecuted to the full extent and letter of the law. It's, it's simple logic. It's so, not a hard concept. When you assault was, another human being, you deserve the law to be... To, to come in and offer you justice yeah. in whatever form we can offer. Go ahead, Ali. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm no, a little rambling. Okay. You're, you're on a great roll there because let, let's talk about the law, right? Uh, we talk about how it's, it's always been legal in the United States for parents to hit their children, and we're just these hippie lefties that don't, uh, don't believe in hurting other people to teach them a lesson. I was spanked and I grew up just fine. Which is, I was spanked and I grew up fine. And nothing to the fact that I was spanked. Okay, I was spanked and I grow, I've grown up with anger issues that, that have been very hard for me to resolve. I've been spanked and grown up with a lot of terrible issues. I'm, I'm not a good... Uh, I'm, not, I'm not a great person. You know what I mean? Um, can I blame that on spanking? Of course I can't. Because everyone else says, well, you know, I was spanked and I turned out great and wonderful. You don't know. You don't know because you don't get to see the other side of you that could have grown up without spanking. So until you get to see yourself in a parallel universe growing up without spanking, don't sit there and say, well, I was spanked and I grew up just fine. Maybe you didn't. You know what I mean? And maybe some of that psychotic stuff that's going on with you, maybe that has a lot to do with it. And and maybe that's exactly what our research is proving now. But let's get back to what Casper was saying as this part is the law and what the law should and shouldn't be. So everyone's saying, oh, you know, in the United States, it's, it's always been legal. People have, have grown up and they've lived to old ripe ages and they've died. It's fine. Spanking is fine. Well, in many parts of the world, many parts of the world, spanking is not legal. Right. A parent is not allowed to touch their child. Let's look at New England uh, off the top of my head. It's a, it's a prime example. If a parent is caught touching their child inappropriately, that would be a slapping, a spanking, or something of that nature, uh, they, they are criminally prosecuted. And let's look at our own United States. Let's look at, let's look at Delaware. Okay. In Delaware, it is illegal to spank your child. In Delaware, it's illegal to spank your child. Um, parents absolutely are prosecuted by law if they touch their child now. So we, here we do, we, we've got this great state um, that does not allow a parent to assault their child. And we don't see those children growing up to be these little ragmuffin assholes everyone's accusing children of being without spanking. So I've got some pretty amazing children, children that are way better than I will ever even dream of being. Okay, they they uh, love to read, 
and they love people and they love to do charity and they love to give and they're they're not even teenagers yet okay and they're already looking into doing all this stuff for their community and looking to do great things they're way better than I could ever even dream of being and everyone says if you don't spank your kid they're a spoiled rotten asshole it's like my my unspanked child would never come on the internet and call you an asshole <laughs> you know what I mean? They're they're not doing that right now. So interesting, interesting. And I know that the the whole thing about um, the debate about spanking is, you know, it, it as, as you mentioned, it's it's an opinion. Everyone has the right to their opinion. But if if we look at if we look at laws, and if we want to say, well, it's always been legal in the United States to spank your children. It's never harmed anyone. Not only are you wrong, because you can't prove it's never truly harmed anyone. Matter of fact, we have all these cases, such as this case in Indiana, that proves that it does harm someone. Uh, many children have been beaten to death because parents have not properly learned how to speak to other people and get their points across and get rules across, get things across without turning into a violent cunt and killing their children. Um, but it also has not always been legal in the United States to speak your child. So uh, coming from that, that legal point of view that you were saying parents should be prosecuted agreed agreed if, if you can't if, if you go to work and you have to deal with a co-worker and you have to say no co-worker you can't take this day off because you're needed here for whatever reasons I'm in charge of the schedule you can't do that that co-worker calls in sick and says fuck you and goes against what you say when they return to work are they gonna get a spanking are you gonna drop their pants and bend them over your knee and pull off your belt and spank them or are you gonna have to come up with a creative way to get your point across to them they can't just do things without without talking it over you know if, if they want to go a different way on a project and you want to go this way on a project and you say well I've done this before I know better I know my way is right and I know your way is wrong and I know you're gonna fuck up everything for us are you then going to go ahead and smack them across the face and tell them they're a spoiled rotten brat and and it's they're grounded in, in that they're embarrassing you for not taking your ideas or are you gonna to have to come up with a constructive way to fucking work out the problem so if you can do this with coworkers, and if you can do this with other people why the fuck are people not doing this with their own children? You know? Why? So it's that that is very frustrating to me. Um, that that parents get to be so lazy. And it's it's given to them, it's a given right. You burst it out of your vagina, now you go spank it when it doesn't do what you want. Are you fucking kidding me? Like seriously? Seriously? Can you just go around spanking something because it came out of your vagina? Does that mean I could start beating any man who fucks me because he came out of my vagina? I don't, I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. It is absolutely fucking ridiculous to hold that as a standard to allow assault. Well, I, you know, Ali, if he likes it, you're welcome to smank any man that, that comes out of your vagina. If he enjoys it, no it, it, yeah. If that's his thing, hey. But you know, it's it's the difference between grown ass adults and and children, and and how we view that. And it's to to me, it's asinine to sit here and act like, well, you know, children. You know, it's a different story. Um. We said that for a long fucking time, and probably around in, in the mid-90s or so, we started getting these cases of very young children committing heinous crimes, including murder, um, and we, we've started convicting them as adults, okay? Even as, early, as young as, as eight, nine years old, we've started convicting them as adults because we say, hey you should know you can't shoot someone in the fucking face. I, you know, even at fucking nine years old, you should probably know it's not okay to shoot someone in the fucking face. Um, I think the rest of us need to take a long, hard look inside and understand that at, at you know, a parenting age, b between maybe, you know, you know, 18 and, and fucking, you know, however old you may be and have children, that maybe at that age, you should clearly understand that you can't beat or hit or assault other human beings, no matter how young they are. That, that just, that's just something 
you're not supposed to do. It's unethical. Okay, I I, I get that a lot of people just don't agree, and I, I understand. I understand it's a it's a difficult topic, especially for people who have children with ADHD and ch children that are hyperactive and children that that really just you know you take them out into public and they just man they seem to just show their ass every time you take them out into public. It's it's hard and it's frustrating and it's difficult but out of this equation okay there's there's a child and there's an adult and as the adult in that situation you are supposed to be the one who understands ethicism who understands morality who understands the notion that it is not okay to assault another human being no matter where it came from, even if it happens to be your vagina, it's not okay to assault another human being. You're a fucking adult, and if you don't understand that by now, you're probably one of the people who wants to tell me and Ali that, I, well, you know, I grew up getting spankings and beatings, and I had to go fucking find a switch so that my grandma could beat me, and I turned out fine. You're probably one of those people, and now you in turn think it's okay to assault another human being as long as they're young enough or as long as they came from your loins in some way it's okay to assault that human being for whatever fucked up reasoning in your head you think it's okay to assault that human being and who put that notion in your fucking head your parents did when they said go get my belt no not the little skinny one Go get the leather one with studs. Go pick a switch out from the fucking fence post. Who put that fucking thought in your head that it's okay to assault another human being? Your fucking parents did. So don't tell me you're okay. You turned out fine. You didn't fucking turn out fine. You think it's okay to assault other human beings. You're the same asshole that will fucking get road rage on the fucking road and fucking swerve someone off the fucking road and then pull out your gun on them. That's the asshole you are, but you turned out okay. You turned out just fine because fucking, you know, you were beaten as a kid, so, hey, it's all good. I turned out okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you turned out just fucking fine. You were a completely well-reasoned, well-rounded adult. You're wonderful. You're wonderful for society. We fucking love having you here. I fucking love riding down the street and going, hmm, I wonder if that son of a bitch is holding a fucking gun in his car and uh, whether he cut me off just because he fucking thinks he can. And if I say anything, if I happen to hang a fucking bird out the fucking window because, yeah, I'm pissed off and maybe that is an irrational reaction, but, you know, it's not violent. I'm just like, hey, man, fuck you. What the fuck is your problem? And so he wants to pull out his fucking gun and shoot me in the face. But, you know, he turned out fine because his parents beat him. And, you know, assaulting another human being is a way to fix your fucking problems. It's fucking not. Violence isn't solving shit. Okay? I, I know a lot of people are out there like, hey man, you know, we've been involved in wars, you know, and we go over there and we kick their ass, and then, you know, we win, and like everything's fine. <sighs> Let's look at Iraq. How'd that turn out? Let's look at fucking Syria. How's that going for us? Let's so look at well. Afghanistan. How's that, how's that working out? Is that, is that kicking ass? We, we're just doing great because we went over there and we wanted to be violent cunts. And we're like, we'll just bomb you out of existence. Ha, 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 ha. Now we win. You don't fucking win. All you're doing is creating more anger. And all you're doing is perpetuating the notion that violence can solve fucking problems. It can't. What we're doing right now, having a discussion, what we're doing right now, talking to people, communicating ideas, trying to have an open dialogue and invite people into the discussion. We, we've got the chat running. 
right now, live chat. If you want to chat with us, we're right here. You're welcome to throw your ideas out here. We'll definitely comment on them. I'm, I'm monitoring them. Um, what we're doing right now, that solves problems. That's how you fucking solve problems. You communicate with people. You open a dialogue. You have a conversation. You know, you, you bring some rational thought to the fucking table and you say, hey, let's have a discussion, man. Let, let's, let's figure out where we disagree, where we agree, and, and where we can meet in the middle. Where, where we can find a way to figure this out. If you think you need to spank your child to discipline them, then, then let's find out why you believe that. Let, let's find out what's up there. Let's have that discussion. Let's see if we can help you to find other ways to deal with that. Let's see if we can find out what, what it is within you that's implanted such aggression within yourself that you feel like you need to lash out at someone half your size, a quarter your size, with half of your intellect, a quarter of your intellect, with half or, or a quarter of your reasoning skills. Why do you need to lash out aggressively and violently at this person? This is another human being. They may be your child, but that's another human being. And if you can tell me, oh man, I would never hit another adult. Oh man, I would never beat my wife. Then don't touch your fucking child. You, you don't have to. You don't have to put your hands on them. There are other ways. And, you know, when we talk about this, you know, we talk about the religious aspect of it, the laws, the legal aspect of it. We have to change people's minds. We have to change their thought process. We have to change their worldview in order to make people understand that we need to have this conversation. We need to all conclusively come together and, and understand what science has taught us, what all the studies Study after study has shown us that says this is not healthy. It's not healthy to bring violence and aggression to, to the table with your children. That's, that's not healthy. How can we create other healthy human beings that forward the progress of humanity? I mean, isn't that the key goal? Isn't that what all of us want? The betterment of humanity. I mean, I, I really feel like some people out there just, you know, they're waiting on the next fucking apocalypse. You know, they're, they're waiting on, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm fucking punching like fucking uh, punch hole number nine on my I live through the apocalypse card on how many supposed apocalypse, you know, I've, I've lived through. It's not fucking, Jesus isn't coming, dude. He's, he's not fucking coming. Okay, 2,000 years, you've been fucking waiting. He's not fucking coming. Just let it the fuck go. Do you give a shit about humanity? Do you give a shit about your fellow human beings? Because if so, we need to start right now in our generation with those of us who are parents, with those of us who have children, with those of us who who you know possibly could become politicians in the future, who, who possibly want to change the atmosphere and the world that we live in, we need to start with us. And we need to look at what can we do to change the path that humanity's on for the betterment of future generations. Because that's what matters. This this shit isn't going to change in my generation. I know that. I know, I know that with absolute certainty. I know I'm, I'm not going to see it. You know, I... I I'm not going to see this better world that I hope will exist. I don't belong there. I couldn't live there. I'm a fucking monster. I don't deserve to live in that world. I don't. I, I know that. But I believe in it, and I want it to happen. And I'm willing to do whatever work it takes to get there, as long as that doesn't mean me going out hurting other human beings. I'll happily defend myself, I'll defend you, I'll defend anyone, but I, I, I'm not just going to go out and, and bring more violence into the world, because that's not solving anything. It's just not. 
Tony, I think I may have overrun you, man. I'm sorry. Let me let me hand it off to you for a minute and finish my cigarette. Uh, I, there's not much I can say. You two pretty much killed it tonight, and I'm not a parent, so not much I can say here. But uh, this whole religious freedom thing, at least a lo- at least among the states, uh, started with Hobby Lobby, in my opinion, because you have a lot of these red states who think they can pass these laws, who want to give their Sorry, my dad's yelling in the background. Uh, he's a Steelers fan. Sorry. Um, God damn it, he made me lose my train of thought. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to lobby. Um, you have a lot of these red states who want to pass these laws. In fact, I think 16, 16 states have proposed these laws, but I think only two ha- actually have them, which is, I think, Indiana and Arkansas. But, you know, you have these... Lo- um, you have it to where they think they can hide behind their religion, and I find it awful funny. That's mostly, well, not mostly, it is just Christians using these laws. You don't see Muslims kicking gays out of their fucking stores because they don't want to bake a fucking cake. You don't see Muslims faith healing their fucking ch- kids and then getting off on it. No. And as far as the whole faith healing thing, I hate to break it to any fundamentalists watching this, it doesn't fucking work. It doesn't work. Okay? Prayer doesn't fucking do anything. Okay? You, you, you're like a fucking child over a birthday cake. It's no different from me starting a fire in my yard and then doing a fucking rain dance over it. It doesn't solve anything. At all. That's pretty much it. So I just wanted to throw something in there uh, really quick, too. And, and you said you don't have children, so, you know, you don't have much to say. But actually, I believe that people who don't have children can offer a lot of, uh, of insight here. Having a child definitely doesn't mean that I am smarter about parenting than you. Um, definitely means that I've, I've been there and I've felt the frustration and I've felt the joy and I have, I have been down a few different streets. But, you know, there, there are a lot of people that don't have kids that are kind of the key to this as well. Uh, if you look at a lot of single people and you ask them, why, why don't you want to have kids, which I'm absolutely 100% for women and men who choose to not have children. Um, I stand behind them 100%. That is their choice. It is not selfish. Uh, but that's probably a, a conversation for a later time. But uh, a lot of the times you ask them, why, why don't you want children just you know, out of kindness, just for your own edification? Uh, and, and some of the things they say, you know, I, I don't want to be that crazy woman in Walmart whipping my children um, up one aisle and down the other. I don't want to be that mom. And, you know, we can, we can look at those things. We can look at the, you know, a lot of people, I don't want to spend my extra money. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want the late nights. I don't want, and, and you can actually look at a lot of the things that people without children say to kind of figure out your own reasoning behind things or um, <laughs> yeah, uh, your, your own reasoning behind things and why, um, you know, if another person feels this way, is that a problem? You know, um, obviously there's not much you can do about 2 a.m. feedings or spending your money, but there's a lot you can do about being that crazy psycho lady running up and down the aisles of Walmart, uh, beating your kid, trying to catch your kid, or, I mean... I took, I took my kids out to lunch over the weekend, and I felt just, I, I, was, I was dumbstruck by this poor woman whose children were in the restaurant with pillows and blankets, um, hanging out because she didn't have anyone to watch her kids uh, that day, and she had to take them to the restaurant and make them kind of hang around, and, and I, I had never seen that before. But I mean, what, what a, a hard situation to be in, what a strong woman to be like, I need money to feed these children, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I can do to feed them. Um, so there there are some people out there with kids who I just, they get in situations, I don't know their situations, but they do things and I just think, like, wow, what a strong, amazing person. And, you know, I, I don't know if I could be that person that's strong, you know. Um, there are some people who are meant to have kids, there are some people who aren't meant to have kids. And I think that that's also a very realistic conversation people need to have with themselves. I have, if, if that, you know, I've seen people that have lots of anger issues, would I be a fit parent? 
Just because you can produce a child does not mean that you should produce a child. Um, and there are some parents that are just so fucking awesome. I'm like, you should produce until you can't because you're just so fucking cool. <laughs> you know, they're, they're just great. But uh, I definitely had a mother that I, I don't believe should have had children. You know, I, I don't believe that she should have. And when people ask me, when we talk about abortion, how would you, how, how would you feel if, if it were you? Um, you know, if your mom had aborted you, great. <laughs> Honestly, I love my life. And, and this isn't um, this isn't me saying that I'm suicidal or anything like that. No, no, no. It's just uh, if my mom would were would have aborted me, I think her life would have been happier. I think that my family's life would have been happier. Um, had she not been so religious and had she, honest to God, had the choice, um, she she didn't have the choice because of the indoctrination indoctrination from religion. But if she were given the choice to have an abortion, uh, absolutely, I, I would have supported my mother one hundred percent in aborting me. And again, that's not that's not I'm not emo. I'm not um, I'm not suicidal. I'm not here to to you know be be a Debbie Downer or anything. It's just yeah, there there are some people that shouldn't have had children. And they do have children, even to this day. And they beat them. And they take out all of life's problems on them. And it's, it's fucking sad. Yeah. Um, I'm actually one of those people. My mother, my oh, bio mom. Yeah, my, my bio mom, as I call her. Uh, I have no relationship with her for per many personal reasons. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was not a religious freak. She was just a cocaine addict who would leave me and my three sisters home alone, days on end, most time without any food. Not, there was, not that there wasn't any fun in that, but uh, a lot of people think I'm joking about this, but it used to piss my teachers off when my permission slits had different names on them. Uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, that was always fun. And they would never believe him. Like, it's my mom, okay? She's just high when she signs the permission slips, I swear. That but, is no, uh, like I said in the chat, I'm going to be an uncle for a second time, so that's good. Congratulations! Yes, that's great. Yeah, definitely congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you. She's due in uh, February. This is her second kid. And, uh, what day in February? I don't know, but I'm hoping to hopefully be in the state when uh, she has it, because that's my main goal is to move to Vermont. My birthday is February 13th. So. Oh, nice. Uh, my, wi my wife's is February 22nd. <laughs> March fifth for me. No, I, you know, Ali, I, I think you bring up a great point, um, and and for me, it it brings us around to this similar topic that's that's um, somewhat secondary, but but also, um, you know, uh, ties into what we've been talking about, which is. I want to look at people like Tony Perkins and his. Um, I don't. I don't know if it's Families First or whatever the fuck his organization is called and shit. We got so many of these fucking Christian right organizations and and these cunts out here. And, and you know, you know what their big spiel spiel is, right? You know, you know what their big deal is. They they, they fucking hate faggots. Like that's their thing. Like they they put this name on there about family the the family fucking organization the the we love families and we're fucking cunts about it organization or whatever the fuck you want to call yourself um and and all they seem to be be fucking focusing on is hey man we can't let faggots get married and and we can't let let trans people into the bathrooms because oh my god that's going to destroy the family you know what? If you're worried about fucking families, let, let's worry about parents that beat their fucking children because your book says, hey, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. Ha 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 ha. And so let's beat our kids because, you know, God and shit. Um, but, look, c could you worry about that? Are you, are you even concerned with that? Does that even fucking come onto your radar oh you, you know what when it does come onto your radar it's it's some fucking Jehovah's Witness family that thinks that I don't have to take my my child to the doctor <coughs> excuse me when they have a deadly disease because I don't believe in doctors I don't believe in blood transfusion so my child should just die you're you're right there to support those assholes when they want to murder their child because they don't want to actually help them. 
<coughs> but but when it comes to doing something to actually help the child, you're nowhere to fucking be found. You know, families are are about two things, okay? First of all, a family is about two people who love each other and choose to make a commitment to each other and choose to make a family and a life together. Okay, first, that's that's a family. Secondly, if and when those those two individuals can have a child, whether it's through adoption <coughs> or, or whether it's through natural childbirth, it's about that child. Okay, and, and once that child comes into the picture, that child should take center stage. That that child should matter more than anything about those two fucking adults that have chosen to make a life together. That child should be first and foremost. And if you're not worried about those kids, if you're out here parading yourself as a family's first group or whatever... <coughs> So sorry, guys. I got a tickle in my throat. Um, you know, if, if you're out here parading yourself as a family organization and you're not worried about these children, then the only thing I can say to you is fuck you. You're a piece of shit. You have no concern about families. None. None. You're, you're using a name for the, the simple and obvious purpose of spin. You know, you're you're trying to, to fucking spin shit. So you look like you're you're parading out here as Captain Save a Ho for the family. Fuck you, dude. You don't give a shit about families. And until you're out here with me petitioning our government to say, hey, the moment you're born into this world, you should be endowed with certain inalienable rights, and that includes the right to be legally immune from assault from other human beings and, and to make other human beings legally responsible if they do assault you, then you don't give a fuck about the family. You don't care. <coughs> Um, I'm, I'm so sorry about the tickle, guys. I'm terribly sorry. Um, the, the other thing I want to reiterate here is, look, um, yes, I'm a parent. I'm a father. I have two wonderful, amazing boys. My, my oldest boy is nine. My youngest is three. And I can tell you right now that if you happen to run across me in the supermarket, uh, Walmart, Kroger, wherever you run across me in a restaurant with my family, you are not going to look at my little boys and go, what a bunch of little shits. You're going to be like, wow, I wish every kid would act like that. And I'm going to tell you right now why my kids act like that. Every day since their birth, I have done everything in my power to reason with them and to educate them. Because your first and foremost job as a parent is an educator. People think they send their kids off to school to get a fucking education. No, you don't. That's, you know... You know, your kids are going to learn basic history and basic math and English in school. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not doing your job as an educator at the home, then you're not doing your job as a parent. Um, my nine-year-old understands more about ethics, equality, justice, humanity, being a decent human being, than nine-tenths of the Christians out there. And I'm talking about adult Christians. My nine-year-old knows more than your fucking pastor about those issues. And he could teach your pastor a thing or two. He could probably teach you a fucking thing or two. And the reason for that is because he's been educated every fucking day. When he does something wrong, I don't put my hands on him. I don't lift a finger towards him. 
I don't threaten him with violence. I don't have to. I sit him down and explain to him how to be a decent fucking human being, what ethics are, and why he should act correctly and act ethically in everything that he does, does no matter who's watching. Oh my god, that, that's such a weird fucking concept. I know. I know, it's such a weird fucking concept for so many people out there to think, well, isn't it only wrong if you get caught? Like, right? You're, you're supposed to do what's right as long as everybody's watching, but if nobody's watching, eh, eh, it's okay, right? No, it's fucking not. Whether anyone's watching or not, my kids are going to do the right fucking thing. Every fucking time. Because they have to live with themselves. They know that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you carry yourself with you everywhere you go. And you've got to live with that person. What kind of fucking person do you want to be? What do you want to have to live with? That's what matters. That's how you learn to be an ethical fucking person. Ask yourself what you want to live with, what you're willing to live with. I wish that I had grown up with that understanding because I have done so many things in my life that are just terrible. <coughs> I mean, they, they, they absolutely weigh on me on a daily basis. Because I was I, I was 25 before I understand uh, understood what it was to be an ethical, decent human being. That's that's a terrible fucking thing to admit. I'll I'll be 36 years old in four days, and uh, I, I you know it's it's less than 11 years ago I I actually figured out what ethics are and how to be a decent human being. That's fucking terrible. Not how many parents out there are failing their children? How many parents out there are failing the rest of humanity because you're not educating your child? And, and why aren't you educating your child? Because you don't fucking understand. Nobody educated you. You're sitting here watching this show go, Look at this dumb fuck telling me how to raise my fucking kid. Look at this dumb son of a bitch. Fuck you, dude. You know, I'm, I'm talking from experience, man. You, you can hate me all you fucking want. But study after fucking study, scientific facts over and over again tell me I'm absolutely fucking right. And it took me 25 fucking years to figure that out because nobody else taught me. That's fucking terrible. It's horrible. We're getting close to the end of the show. I'm going to let everybody uh, have their final thoughts, and then I'll wrap it up. You want to go for it, Allie? Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I just I, I don't think that anyone, obviously, is indoctrinated into believing that prayers are going to save lives. Um, whatever, listen to anything we have to say here tonight about that. I'm sure you are just going to go on thinking they're idiots, they're dumb, they don't know the power of God, and you're the God in their heart, blah, blah, blah. We, we've, we've heard it all a thousand times over. You're, you're not special or unique. But I do hope that something else that we've said in the show about spanking your child does kind of set in. Because if you're not going to get your child medical attention when they need it, I don't want you to fly off the handle and beat them to the point where they do need medical attention, and then you just sit there and pray over them and then hide their body um, when they die. So... Uh, at least, please, be a decent human being. And remember that uh, the thing that came out of your vagina is, while you may see it as your property, uh, they do have feelings and they do deserve respect, just as your co-worker would deserve respect when they do something you don't like. Um, so please just try to be a little less cavemanish and go ahead and, and maybe try having a discussion. And then maybe try a little bit of patience on your part instead of just whipping out your hand and whipping someone because they came out of your vagina. Tony? Uh, not much. All I'm going to say is that if your kid is sick, I don't give a fuck what your book says. Take him to the fucking hospital. Um, me, personally, I think, you know, just my opinion, I think spanking does occasionally work. That's just the way I grew up. 
But, uh, yeah, don't beat them so much to where they need medical attention or you fucking kill them. And as I always say, if you like what you saw here tonight, subscribe to this cha awesome channel as well as my channel, Atheist Ranger, because I am four subs away from 100. Like, help me break that barrier, please. That's all. All right, folks. <clears throat> you know, um, th there's not a lot else I can say here. You know, I, th I think I've made my position really fucking clear here. Um, I, I don't believe that any human being on the face of this earth has the right to assault another human being. Period. You you don't have the right to put your hands on anyone. You just don't. Um, the the only qualifier there is in self defense. If they put their hands on you and you have to defend yourself, you know you have to defend yourself. Um, I, I don't think you should just turn the other cheek. You know I'm not preaching some Jesus shit here. Don't turn the other fucking cheek. They put your fucking their hands on you. Hey man, do what you got to do. Um, don't kill them. <laughs> like that's that's, that's kind of my only thing like you, you don't have to kill another person in order to stop them from assaulting you most times most times so show some restraint um, in any self defense situation but other than that keep your fucking hands to yourself you know this applies to fucking assault uh, this applies to rape which is a form of assault um, th this applies to a myriad of issues. Keep your fucking hands to yourself. They're your fucking hands. The only person on the planet who has control over your fucking hands and what you do with them is you. So keep them to your fucking self. Keep them off your kid. Keep them off your fucking wife. Keep them off some stranger. Don't assault people. It's a pretty fucking simple idea. Just don't do it. If you don't want to be punched in the fucking face, don't assault people. Pretty fucking cut and dry. Um, I am working on typing up some legislature that I'd like to present to a state representative in some state that is more progressive than mine. I live in Tennessee, and I'm not going to get any of my senators or fucking House of Representatives fucking people to forward this on to uh, to, to Congress or, or to the uh, Supreme Court, but I would love to see someone pick this up, and I, I want to put forward um, the, the law that says assault applies from birth. Okay, from the moment you're born, you should be endowed with the right to be free from assault. And from the moment you're born, if someone puts their hands on you, it doesn't matter if they're your fucking parent, they've assaulted you, and they deserve to be prosecuted for it. And I would like to see our Supreme Court and our congressmen put this motion forward and pass this into law and say, look, we're going to protect every person on the face of this fucking earth that we can protect – um, at least within this country and say, hey, if you're in the United States, you don't put your fucking hands on people or you will go to court and you will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, period. And if you use a weapon to do that, even if that includes a wire fucking coat hanger, I don't give a shit what your fucking religion says. You have assaulted another person and that is aggravated assault and you will go to prison. And I, I, I want people to help me with this. So um, if you want to contact us on the Devils in God's Country Facebook page, um, I'd be more than happy to receive messages there. And, and from anybody who thinks that they may live in a state where we could get this pushed forward with one of your representatives or something, that'd be great. Like I said, I can't do it here in Tennessee, man. These, these fuckers are crazy. Um, we're, we're trying to go as backwards as fucking North Carolina and Indiana here, so I'm, I'm not going to get my people to, to push it forward. But if we can get it pushed forward by someone, um, that would just be my, uh, amazing. And it, it, even just to have people out there see it, you know, and to have this idea implanted in their minds that, whoa, 
hey, maybe that is fucking assault. Like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't assault anyone, ever. That'd be great, man. If, if we can just, you know, change, change some minds. Um, change the thought process with a lot of people. You know, you, you don't have to stop believing in your God just because you believe that you shouldn't assault other human beings. Um, I'm pretty sure that even if you, you know, if you're religious and you believe in Jesus or whatever and, and the general teachings of Jesus, you kind of feel like, hey, I probably shouldn't assault people. I think we can all agree about that. So let's come together and let's actually do something to help families. And let's do something to help the children that are trapped in these families where parents believe that assault is a proper answer. Because it's not. It's just not. Um, as always, the thoughts and ideas expressed here are not necessarily the thoughts and ideas of all members of Atheist Republic. We have a huge group of people um, on this team, and we cannot possibly speak for all these people. We cannot possibly speak for the entire atheist community. I'm sure there are plenty of atheists out there who disagree with me and think I'm a complete fucktard. I get you. You're welcome to that opinion. Um, if you have any issues with anything that we've said here, please address them to the Devils and God's Country on Facebook. Um, address them in the comments below here on our videos, not the other videos from Atheist Republic. I know our men's been sharing some other videos on AR. Um, Please check out Armin's videos on AR. Fucking great videos. He's posted about three of them here lately, and they've been really great videos. So you should check out the channel. Um, check out what Armin's posting there, even if you don't really care for the show. Um, I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea. So um, if you like what Atheist Republic is doing as an organization, trying to build a uh, strong and vibrant atheist community online and in your local communities, um, please visit atheistrepublic.com. You can volunteer with us and join our organization. Um, if you got a few bucks to spare, we would always love to have a little monetary support, although what we do here on this show is in fact free, and we personally at the Devil are not going to ask for your money. The Atheist Republic is a nonprofit organization, and we do need, um, you know, people to to help us continue doing what we're doing. So if you've got a few bucks and you could throw them our way, that'd be awesome. Um, but if not, we totally understand. We're not going to kick you out or fucking ostracize you or any of that bullshit. Um, <clears throat> the show may be uh, airing on a different uh, day. In the future here, we're, we're trying to get all of our schedules straight. We all are um, working adults with, you know, normal jobs and stuff, so we're all trying to figure out exactly when we can do this show and uh, work out all of our schedules. So stay posted. We'll try to keep you informed on the Devils and God's Country Facebook page on when we're going to do the show and what time and what day. So just uh, stay tuned for any new updates as to when we're going to do the show. Um, <clears throat> until then... We will see you again uh, next week, uh, probably same time, uh, maybe on Sunday. We're, we're kind of throwing that around, so we'll just see what day it is. And, of course, please check out our Facebook page, Devils in God's Country, and uh, stay tuned for any uh, changes in time or station or, uh, you know, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And uh, you'll be updated with uh, some upcoming devil shots that may uh, inform you about time changes or anything. Thanks for watching. This has been another Devils in God's Country. Take it easy.